All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard the song. You know the graphic. Of course, we are back. It's time for the LPL. Once again, took a little bit of a break after well, that last match to mourn YG's playoff hopes for us. Uh, <laughs> and we've been drying our eyes on that one. World Academy just shut them down, and now they're going to be vying for only relegation position. And I promised myself I wouldn't cry. No, um, you're completely right. Can we have a moment of silence for Somewhere Young Glories? <laughs> playoff is run. A tear. I would shut a tear after that. Of course, the man of the hour. Actually, they're going to give it to you, Jay. Fantastic. You're normally the MVP surprised, points. But yeah, that makes sense, too. Those solar flares. I mean, they were on. really, really good. It's easy to look at the carry and be like, yeah, he was the greatest. I was thinking about Soas, to be honest, because it, he played the second half of the game like a completely different person. But, uh, I mean, you have to think of how rare it is to get uh, two f or a five person solar flare. I believe he had two, if not three, that game. So, that huge plays, obviously. <laughs> it did result in two barons. A uh, huge play coming out from UJ right there. Again, we talked about how China is the region known for the aggressive supports. And I feel like aggressive is kind of like a very generic fill word for, for China. But the mentality is, again, the Annie support, Syndra support, LeBlanc support, things like that. They're very much about empowering their supports to make plays for them. Uh, while the rest of the world was talking about, you know, the 80 carry, if you think way back, of course, it's now kind of shifted. We have the new Lucian, of course, the 80 carry's got their, their rework with the item changes, things like that. At the very beginning of Season 3, when they had you know, the big shift of supports getting stronger, and you saw all those mage supports coming out of the gate. The top laners were incredibly potent and powerful. Um, and everyone was saying, you know, the AD carries are so weak right now. What was China doing? China literally made the statement, because the support is stronger, it makes the AD carry stronger because there's someone uh, there to protect them. So whereas everyone else in the world is saying, you know, the AD carry is worthless, he's trash, he's not going to be able to do anything at the beginning of, uh, of season four. Yes, season four. I had to do my math really quick. The Chinese were like, nah, we can do this. We got this, guys. Well, and what, what that game also highlighted was two very different styles of aggressive support. You had uh, Yan Sir doing the kind of Rome Alistair. It's the kind of thing we see a little more commonly with some bigger playmaking supports. I think the North American Challenger scene has a lot of players that make plays like that. I'm thinking of, like, you know, your elements of the world. Uh, and... Don't go two challenger scene there, <laughs> Don't go, Pyra. Never go full challenger. And then on the you other side... You never go full elements. Yes, yes. Uh, well, somebody has to, right? <laughs> They'll cost support what? <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to pretend that didn't happen. But on the other side, on, on Academy, you see a little bit different. You see uh, sticking with the carry, but initiating the fights, playing somebody like Leona, which has fallen out of the meta in other regions, very effectively, and comboing it up with Jarvan. That was an incredible series of plays from Academy, and I cannot Jarvin, wait to see what they do this time. I, I, I'm glad that you brought those points, because they're very important. Jarvan and Leona will never fall out of favor in China because it speaks to their meta so well. The ability to engage uh, team fights. Like, the thing about Chinese teams is you, you cannot fight them. They will always win. Their team fight ability is far superior because uh, their meta has grown up that you have to think they, they put so much reliance on the AD carry for so long, even though now we talked about how they have this resurgence of all these strong mid laners. Uh, they have to get 5v5s going very quickly. They love to dive. They love team fighting. And it's because, you know, they have all these all-star AD carries. You can't keep that person in the side bot lane farming indefinitely, you know, pulling a double lift until 30 minutes in the game. You have to get him involved, which is why they group so early and the roam is very strong. Mm -hmm. Uh... And the team fights, the counter engage, really was played up by Academy. They, they started a little bit shaky, and you saw how much emphasis there was on shutting Mickey down in the mid lane. But you almost kind of wonder if that wasn't overemphasized because they just kind of forgot about everybody else, and then SMLZ got huge. I think it was, it was punished fairly well, and it speaks to the weaknesses of Young Glory versus World Lead Academy. If you line these two teams up, kind of like a puzzle, um, Mickey God, I'm not going to put him over Dan Goon, although he is a very, he's shown that he's a very proficient mid laner, not only in his champion pool, but in his abilities to support his team. Um, he has come up with that hard carry potential, but obviously it's all about SMLZ, you know, he has the reputation of being that hard carry, hyper carry, 80 carry. Compare that across the lane to Shen Long, who frankly has had a very lackluster performance, especially because he's flanked by uh, A. Dian Goon, Yin Fu, and Yan Sir, all uh, pretty amazing standout players for Young Glory. But the play style between these two teams is also very different, which is what I want to touch on. Again, talking about Young Glory is very much uh, 
you can tell that they're thinking in everything that they do with their picks and things like that, which, you know, it, every team playing on a professional level obviously should have some thought process going on up there. But you can tell, you know, they have cast in. We're going to pick Alistair. We're going to look for the dive. Ali's going to roam as soon as he's level six. We're going to pick the ribbon. We're, we're thinking about this here. We're thinking about this there. They got punished on a bad 5v5. It's almost like classic China versus new age China. That 5v5 mentality, like you're not going to be able to stack your abilities or outperform our hyper carries versus we're going to play the map. We're going to force Dian Goon to, uh, to split push to find free objectives, to out-comp you. And it was very interesting seeing these two styles, especially, again, this is the very bottom tier of the LPL brackets. These are the last two place teams go at it. Yeah, these are the two teams that came up uh, from the LSPL last split as well. So they're definitely a little bit more raw and a little bit more invested in that classic mentality, but you see Young Glory turning over several new leaves in trying this new strategic uh, play out. If not for the fact that they had they had taken a couple of bad pushes there and gotten just completely out positioned, I think <laughs> that they could have the had this game. Of the year. I really, if they hadn't, yeah, if they hadn't given the Barons up, they would have won, right? That's totally, uh, that's totally a pretty big statement there. But yeah, it's it, it's unfortunate for them, but it, they just got out team fought. Can they bounce back though? Well, I'm really curious and I'll have to do some digging on this t to see if Young Glory had kind of a um, the flame lit underneath them after they had their big win streak, if they started scrimming again, because I would find it absolutely hilarious if they didn't scrim, 2-0 oh, yeah. the top bracket, started screaming again when, you know, the, the pressure was back on to make a playoff seed and then immediately lost. So they should just never scrim again. Never scrim. That's what, that's what we learned today. Today in LPL, I learned. Never, ever, ever play scrims. Just play regular games. Never Here we go. Pick bands, and it's going to be Thresh banned away from UJ again. It's going to be Young Glory's first takeaway, also, looking at the Yasuo. They have first pick. Young Glory was the team to ban Lucian. We'll see if Ward Lead Academy respect the champion. Again, 4.12 Lucian. He is not disabled. LPL does not disable champions. It's every man for themselves. I, I think it has to get banned again. Zhen Long is not... Oh, okay. They banned it on Academy side. That was actually a nice tip in the pocket for Young Glory. Again, it hurts red side. Uh, huge. The fact that it will... We did see Cassidy go through last time. I, I doubt I that they'll let Cassidy go through. Uh, it uh, might effectively, that means that red side is Cassidy and Lucian, ban of your choice. Mm -hmm. Which, red side actually has a, um, a, phen a phenomenal... Can't even say that word today. Uh, what's That's my sub word? Oh, Leona Let me Band. Open... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me open my. We've seen uh, this before. Phenomenal, phenomenal win it. rate on you got side. It. There we go. All right, guys, Words my are co casters hard. on top of it. There's Cassidy and Band away as well. They don't want to take any chances at all. It's young Glory. What are they first pick here? There's a lot on the table. Brom still an option for Yancer. The jungle is completely open. Look at all those bands. That is support and mid lane entirely. Oh. And they're going to go with Braum. Maokai is available. Did I, did I predict first pick? Young Glory, please. Oh, they do it. Yeah, I think this means we might see Jarvan. <laughs> and, of course, Maokai is on the table as well. So we won't be seeing Gragas. Does... I will say, uh, Young Glory, obviously, not new to giving up overpowered picks. It kind of bit them in the ass last game with that cast and pick up in the mid lane. However, yeah. they have shown that they have a competence for their pick ban phase, so I'm not going to throw them out the window yet. Throw them out with the bathwater with that brawn pickup, leaving Maokai open, although I think that's a huge mistake. This is the Maokai changes. He effectively has an area of a... <laughs> he has an AoE exhaust for the enemy team. That's a 20% damage reduction on an AoE for Maokai's ultimate. Yeah, they sure do like running the Kog'Maw Braum lane. I'm not sure if I'm sold on that one. And they could have done a Tristana takeaway, but yeah, Zhen Long's not exactly noted for his variety in champ selection. So Lulu. Lulu will always, again, be a, uh, a huge pick in LPL. Not so much for the top lane, although it has been played a couple of times. Most notably by World Elite Academy, or World Elite's top laner, Salme. They are still thinking about the Gragas, and I think this would be a mistake for number one to go for Gragas again. I feel like this pick ban phase is absolutely terrible from Young Glory. Um, World Elite Academy got every single thing that they wanted. Yeah, except Cassidy. They banned it away themselves. Except Cassidy. But that's okay. That said, 
Alistair, I, I feel, is effectively the better Braum, especially on this current patch. Uh, Tristana, SMLZ, had a fantastic performance on that last game, what ended the game with 12 kills. Jarvan, Soas, again, instrumental in helping stack those solar flares for uh, Yushe. Maokai was banned last time. Has uh, I believe he's only seen play once so far in the LPL before twice. this game. It was almost twice, was and it a, was in a, a remake game. Yeah, the, the remake game in LGD. So is already being recognized as kind of the powerhouse OP champion that he is. Zareth is bugged and still enabled in LPL. Yeah, the you get bug, four shots uh, instead of three sometimes. Yeah, and it's yeah. very easy to replicate. Well, and they, they didn't even try to outpick. I, it looks like Young Glory has pretty much just given up on the set. At least that's what the picks and bans are starting to say. We'll see how they play the composition looking at it. Uh, so Kogma, Lulu, mid-game bridge champion, protect the Kogma, you have the displacement, and then you have a backline dive. It's the, the issue that I have here is it's a lot of power and responsibility put on Shenlong um, Which when their star exactly player is Dian Gu. Last time. Yeah, I, I don't know why they went for the Lulu flex and then still opted for Gragas. You would have thought that Lulu would have been a better choice to try and square off against Maokai. Typically people are looking at either... Um, Mundo, due to his SV rush, or you could do Aurelia and try to get a snowball there. Obviously, Gragas works because they're effectively kind of the same champion. Yeah, well, Gragas is a little lighter. Greggy light. <laughs> it's the only time you'll ever hear that phrase uttered. Gragas is lighter than Maokai. You saw the, the list of champions by weight? I missed that uh, award-winning piece of fiction. Oh, man. I always forget everyone's not as into the lore as I am. Are you kidding me? I write my fanfic. I'm writing my fanfiction right now for League of Legends. But you missed how they're all way. Uh, never mind. Okay. Well, yeah. It seems like Young Glory picked this out really, really strangely, and you can tell by the looks on their faces that they're 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 not necessarily having fun with this. But I don't think they're taking it too seriously. Not the playoff three is dead. You have to think that that's kind of a crashing reality, knowing that you had that huge burst. You were looking at the playoffs, and now you're simply just trying to scrape out of relegation. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens as we get ready to go into the game. This is going to be, I think, still a pretty exciting team fight game, just from what happened last time. Do you expect Baron Syndrome, our old friend, to make another comeback? That was uh, a pretty intense Baron match. Uh, China is known for kind of their Baron throws and their over-reliance and dependence on the uh, the big purple monster, but that was kind of a new level there. Oh, yeah. Well, here we go. Loading up onto Summoner's Rift. It is Young Glory taking on World League Academy once again. Of course, it says Young Glory has one win, but we all know what's really true. Yeah, that's actually... I wonder when they change it. Pretty different. <laughs> they weren't watching the same game we were. <laughs> Is the phrase I'll use. Anyways. Hey, it's a dance party in the top. Oh no, it's a tree. I better run away from that one. Number one says as he waddles his way back over towards the blue buff. And actually, if he overcommits to that, yeah, that would be diff that would be a really scary thing for Khan, but he, he gets out in time. I think he was just trying to get that deep stop right? Oh yeah. Yeah, because he places his trinket afterwards. So, uh, they're going to play this out very safe, because I think when they see Khan going that far forward, they're expecting an invade. And now, Academy can pretty much do anything that's not in that side of the map. Oof. Spot out number one in the brush. Gotta be careful. Might be a lane swap, though. We have Shenlong in the mid lane. Oh, nope, there he goes. He's waddling down to the bot lane. He's, like, not sure where he wants to go. Actually, this is very delayed. This is not... Oh, they're just, they're just trying to set some, set up a bait. This is a really, really risky maneuver. The very, With very this, late though, invade. this is a lane swap. Oh, yeah. So, uh, number one is going to be utilizing his teleport, um, as well as the double jungle system to keep even with Maokai. And it is going to be a 2v1 scenario trying to put that tree down. That's not the worst thing in the world. It makes a little more sense with the picks and bans now because Gragas is still one of the better later sustaining 2v1 champions. Whereas the issue, we don't worry about this now on the other side. The issue that I have, however, is that Maokai is not a gold-dependent champion. He doesn't need items to be insanely tanky. He has that built into his kit naturally through levels. And so denying him some sort of farm um, in a 2v1 lane doesn't really hurt what he's going to be doing for the team. 
Whereas I feel like Gragas is similar in that instance, but I feel like he's more item dependent than Maokai is, simply because Rod of Ages is a, is a key item. Although Maokai can go that route as well. I just feel it's slightly more important on Gragas just because of uh, how his kit works. You have to think he needs AP to wave clear effectively. He needs... Uh, yeah, that's about it. I guess I he gets innately take you all on his own because of Stadio. I don't know if as much about the farm denial as it is about just not wanting to take the 2v2. Being terrified of uh, Tristana Alistair. Yeah. Well, he also saw what he did last time on that. And it wasn't like they lost super hard in late or anything, but this might give them a better chance to, to do what they do best and, and wait it out until the later stages of the game when they can team fight effectively. However, for the time being, we see the jungle buddy system engaging. Scumbag Soas pulled the race over to Khan. Ooh, is he going to cancel the back? Oh, yeah, he does. Ooh. Uh, has to take the long route home. They're trying to that. force him to use that teleport. Uh, you see that Yushe has already made his back and is wandering up into the top lane, so he'll be up there with Maokai. Uh, meanwhile, SMLZ, pretty much the Wei Xiao of World Elite Academy, is now getting the solo EXP and farm. Should be able to uh, get him up to a decent level there. He's not quite caught up to where Shen Long is, but now Shen Long has to contend the giant tree in his lane. Doesn't seem to be too worried about it. Ooh, they get the stun off with the Winter's Bite proc. Typically with a lane swap like this, it's uh, a traded early dragon for the early tower. So it becomes the a slow push versus a fast push as far as the top and bottom lane are concerned. You have to understand that they always have to have on the forefront of their mind, Shen Long and Yan Sir, that if World Lead Academy try to force the Dragon with a numbers advantage. We have to be in position to take the top tower to trade the global objectives immediately. Which is why SMLZ is like, you know, it's cool, bro. I'm just going to sit down here and keep my wave close to my tower and deny you off of your farm. Whereas they can't deny Maokai. They have to be that far forward because they have to be able to act. Yeah. Ooh. Speaking of acting, Dan Goon doing a good job of pretending like that didn't hurt, but he is dangerously low right now, but he knows he's got a little help. So is going in to try and make this first blood that's going to be delayed for just a second because there was also Yinfu, ever-present buddy, and they forced the summoner heal. Ooh, the teleport. Actually, this could be, yep, that's going to be, oh, it's going to be close. Oh, that repel, saving his life. So is could go down here for first blood. I think it will be, and that ends up going over to Dangoon. The baits were huge right there, but it was a near miss, and if not for Yan Sir, that would have been a very different story. Two beautiful things really happened there to secure the first blood for Young Glory. First and foremost, a gorgeous cocoon from Yin Fu from the jungle. I don't know if you saw it, but as Jarvan went and so is winning for the flag and drag, he got caught on a cocoon on the back half, which means that the which meant that the chain CC did not go down on top of Dian Goon. Secondary, of course, is the roam from Yan Sir, the captain and shot caller for Young Glory. Yeah, that was almost perfect. It, it mirrored what they did last time to Mickey, actually, uh, with the three-man collapse. But in this instance, it involved the support uh, Yancer instead of the top laner. So I really like what they did there to pick that one up, but it was so close, and it could have easily been Dan Kuhn going down instead. Mm -hmm. A straight outplay. The teleport did come out from number one, though. It was canceled, so there is that. Mm -hmm. And... Things are going to reset a little bit. I feel like this game is already looking like a lot more controlled than the last just because Young Glory don't want to let that early game aggression get out of hand. And Academy seems to be okay with that for the time being. They have the advantage as far as Dragon is concerned because they have the bot side. But looking at this, you're going to see some They have the advantage as far as, you know, waiting this game out. You're absolutely right. World Elite Academy is perfectly fine letting this game stall out and not giving in to the early aggression of Young Glory. And Young Glory does seem slightly more hesitant just because they were burned so effectively last time. But you, you do not want to play a stall game with a uh, Maokai, Tristana, Zareth composition. No, and that's going to prompt Young Glory to try and act on this. So they have been able to get a little bit of an advantage for themselves in the very beginning of this game, but anything at all could completely negate that in just a minute. An early dragon could just turn the gold around anyways. Young Glory has a lot of pressure to make moves right now, and they don't really have the high carrying composition to do it. It's going to be Protect the Cog. That's the name of the game. So far it's working, but it's not really hard when you're soloing in the top lane. Scary thing, though, is we actually see Jarvan hanging around the mid lane. He's in the river, so he could look top at this point. And Kogman does not have the security that SMLZ had when he was solo in the lane. Obviously, because the wave A wasn't pushed, and B rocket jumped Tristana versus little Kogma. 
Although Young Glory, uh, the Roam Braum right now to secure the the numbers that advantage was really interesting that they go for this. So all four or four members are down here. However, Khan has teleport available. There's no way that Chen Long could get in time to the fight if they even wanted to take it. And they don't at all. And they're still sitting on level five, and they back away wisely. Nice blue steel, actually. That was a very stealthy undercover mission. Yet it required all four members or four members of Young Glory to do it. I'm still very curious of the priority of Braum over Alistair, especially since they're effectively playing a Rome meta. Uh, Braum is pretty much strong level 1, and then he's weak level 2 through 5 as far as the lane phase is concerned. His strength then comes back up as far as team fight presence with his ultimate, that, that huge glacial fissure, but him roaming around, he's obviously not getting the levels you, s you see he's level 5 still, um, so he, he's not having that ultimate available for him for those team fights. Yes, it's important to give Kogma that solo farm, but this would work so much more effectively with uh, Alistair. He would have so many more tools early to complete that roam and make it that much more deadly. That's true. The early roam is definitely a little bit weakened by the fact that they didn't go for that. However, I think their team fighting presence is a little bit better with Braum than on Alistair. Um, the stun procs, when you have Cog going rapid fire mode, that can get out of hand pretty quickly. However, he's hanging out. and they, Khan doesn't know he's there. However, the bot lane now being focused out by Academy, that's going to be Gragas getting double timed up. And whoa, that was so crazy that we had the graphics break for just a second. SMLZ should be able to find himself a kill. He does on the tower dive. Meanwhile, up in this jungle right now, it's going to be Soas going down. Double team 2v2 now becomes a 1v3 as Mickey is in a little bit of trouble. Teleport coming in from Khan. He's going to focus himself out. Oh, Dan Goon with the flash staying alive just barely. Khan's going to fall down. That was a nice play, and that was exactly what Young Glory needed. The resources committed bottom. They decide to go full ham, find exactly what they need in the mid lane, see if they can transition this into a global objective with that tower. Looks like they're going to back off and look for the other global, though, in form of the dragon, which makes sense. The tower will always be available. The dragon, of course, isn't. Yep. It, it's a nice choice just because they were going to typically lose out on it anyways just due to the fact that the, the lane swap opened it up. But with that fight, it enables them to pick it off quite easily, and they allow some of the minions to peck away at the tower's defense anyways and not give any more of that extra experience to Mickey. So really good play by Young Glory to recognize where the commitment was and to completely capitalize on it. See if they can hold out again. Whoa! I s Ooh. Uh, all right. Clearing that out. Going back. He's That's just a wave, it on wave flare explosive cask. <laughs> Saving a star makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's still on Young Glory though to see if they can turn their early game snowball as far as the global objectives and the, and the small advantages that they've found into the map into a mid game late game carry potential. Um, SMLZ still on Tristana. I, I I have to keep harping on it. I feel like World Lead Academy got every single pick that they wanted. They weren't denied anything. Well, they're playing the late game too. A lot of Tristanas these days going for the uh, static shiv rush. Not so in this case. Academy going for the tried and true, and they will hit that insane Tristana power spike with or without the kills. Mickey's holding out well in the mid, but the thing that Young Glory have going for them is that they've been able to really take the fight when they need to, and they're denying a lot of vision here. I, I, I like what's going on for them, but I can only hope that they can carry this later on in the game because. Academy has shown that when push comes to shove, they can take these huge fights. And the later the game goes, the easier that gets for them. We do finally have the 2v2. SMLZ, of course, has the kill. There's a spider in those bushes. <laughs> There's a spider, but I think spider's not going to hang around. Bug doesn't want to get squashed. Uh, level advantage, completely even. Uh, CS advantage, pretty much even. About 3 SC. Oh, wait, spider is staying around. Uh, bait the fight out. SMLZ is trading it out with Shen Long. Uh, they know. Sweeper confirms the allegations. However, they might look for a dive here. Here comes Dan Goon around the side. He finds SMLZ, gets a poke on him with the glue, and teleport now coming in for number one. They're committing 100% to this one. SMLZ running for his life as fast as his order legs can carry him. That's a big buster shot. He might go down, however. They're chasing on forward, and they finally get it. They stay alive, too, and that's going to be a pick on a UJ. So the five-man chase. This looks like World Elite Academy last time with this aggression. So much expended, so many resources down. They do find two kills. Should transition this into a tower. Uh, luckily, Khan did not have the teleport available because that could have been a swing of disaster for Young Glory. So, good read on that. Yeah, that was actually a very, very nice 
decision in the moment, and they decide to farm a little bit more behind the line and let the minions absorb some of that before finishing off the tower. Actually, just backing away to deny even further. Yeah, I think they can take out another wave. Yeah, shouldn't be a problem. Although we do see the uh, the Mickey God Zareth Rome mm -hmm. does have ultimate available. Yeah, but so does number one. It's not just a fancy name. He knows how to play when he needs to. See if he is not even going to be in any trouble. And oh, you know who's in trouble though? Shenlong. But he answered to the rescue. Stand behind me, little Kogma. I'll save you from the big bad Yordle. <laughs> I like that. Uh. I like that Cogma skin. It's pretty much a favorite. Mm -hmm. Were we Makes talking about the other day? Like, uh, yeah, I think we were. But we'll have to talk about it in a minute because Dan Dune <laughs> is in a little bit of trouble. Cataclysm's coming in, but Yancer says, no problem. We'll take this fight. Mickey going to go short range nuclear. And that is not going to get the bug procced off so he stays alive. Yancer going down, but it was a noble sacrifice to save Dan Dune's life. Unfortunately for World League Academy, hey, but they got their win back, so yes, and, there's... Uh, uh, he was being small things by number one. Yeah, back to the Kogma comment. <laughs> no, that's, I was gonna say, really unfortunately part. for World League Academy, they don't really get anything off of that buff or off oh, of yeah. that. Uh, There's really nothing they can do. Dragon's yeah, still got it. this is why Dragon was such a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. Just Young Glory's been uh, been so much better at punishing these picks. It's, it's sometimes about team deathmatch in LPL, um, but if we go back to Royal Club at Season 3, they actually had uh, Season 3 Worlds in their game against Fnatic. They actually had less kills than Fnatic, but they ended up winning the game because their kills meant more because they would kill someone and they would immediately transition that into an objective lead. Whereas World Lead Academy, you know, they find the kills there, but all they get are blue buff. You know, you also got some wolf camp, so some bonus there, but effectively it didn't necessarily mean anything. Yeah. Well, and Young Glory has really only been giving them the couple of kills, not not necessarily giving them any larger objectives. And the bigger problem is that they've been taking these fights when their lanes are all pushed out, so there's really no option for Academy to do much about it. So, looks like the game is paused, and of course, we will have to see what the cause of that is. There are, of course, little bugs and things here and there in the system. I believe, though, that... With the pause game, that means that they get to spend more time with us. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, hey, guys. It's the uh, Pyrofrost Variety Hour. Hi, guys. Oh, those guys don't seem too happy about it. Come on, Young Glory. Crack a smile. No, Pressure's on. They just had their, their hopes and dreams crushed. Yeah, was... that's, that's a rough thing to happen at the start of the night as well. But you know what else is going on that I'm really, really excited for after this match, of course? The big, big showdown between the top two, or rather top three, two of the top three. I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's Edward Gaming Starhorn. That is going to be insane. I mean, that it's it's getting towards the end of the season, where you can't. Super hot royal club. The super hot royal club. Yeah, what was it? It was called. super hot royal crew, sir. Super. Hot. Well, it depends on if you're a crew or a club. I mean, those are two very different things. Where can I get one of those lace stickers? Mm, I think you might have to get them in the store. I know that one's peeling off. Doesn't look like a very well made thing. I thought they were they were patches for the longest time because you know I was trying to design <laughs> those LPL <laughs> that jerseys. That guy looks like he's sleeping. <laughs> and I yeah, couldn't. I didn't out of school for this. Oh, we're back that's, again. that's why they cover their faces, by the way. It's because they don't want um, their teachers to recognize them. I see. Okay. Clutch strategy. I, I hear that they do it in OG and audience as well. Well, sometimes. Which is why it, it, I only ever notice the girls doing it. Yeah, but it's because they don't want to be recognized. Mm -hmm. You can tell some of them don't really care too much, though. The guy we saw in the highlights, like, just freaking out. I love that guy's face. That guy was amazing. Can we get that as, like, an emote? We need to make that's emotes on this channel. It's literally the face that I make all the time. Mm -hmm. For those of you that don't see Frosk's face on a regular basis, I can confirm this. <laughs> we need a Baron emote. Yeah, we do. I think it was discussed that the first emote for the stream when it goes subscriber mode is uh, no, it's Baron is with a the clock Baron. on his. He has like a clock chain, like Flavor Flav style, because it's Baron time. Flavor Flav. Yep. I shouldn't do that. I'm sorry. Back to no, the game. It's okay. I forgive you. Everybody gets one. Mistakes were made. <laughs> oh, number one, Khan. Hello. Who's going to win this Speaking of duel? mistakes. I don't know. I don't think the fat man has that in the bag. Uh-oh, Shenlong. Come on, buddy. Can't get caught out like that. Doesn't die for it. All of a sudden, answer to the rescue. They're going to turn this one around. Yuzhe. Ooh, he's low. Buster Shot's going to knock back answer for just a moment. That ult is completely dodged out. The Glacial Fissure not going to land on anybody. But they can take the fight. And here comes, well, here came 
number one, and he went down immediately. That is not the way you want to take the fight. So is making the numbers even. I think that was a knee-jerk reaction, and they're going to lose at least two for this one. I feel like I've seen this exact same play before. Don't don't go to Baron. Don't go to Baron. Hey, they fixed the uh, they fixed the graphic. Now it says World Elite one. Exactly. I told you they got the win back. Okay. Uh, first things first. In the words of Kobe, that teleport sucked. I wasn't sure what number one was trying to do right there, but he effectively teleported, and the just immediately fed gives the numbers advantage. And of course, Khan follows it up. So and this is a free dragon. dragon. Easily uh, picked up by Academy. Can we talk about those hero minions, though? The hero creep for Yan Sir to stand behind me, too, to try to get uh, a proper ultimate, and then the sidestep from Yuje, and that he finds his own hero creep to W2. Yeah, it would have been great if that special fissure had actually landed. They went so ham on that. At first, it was like, okay, there's no tower. This will be great, right? And then Soas shows up, and then they're like, uh-oh. But then number one shows up. Guys, I got this. And they blow him up. <laughs> And then number one shows up. He should have just backed instead of straight teleporting. I feel like we could make number two jokes, but maybe uh, a little. Let's not sink to that level. A I little think, I don't think I'm that tired right now. Oh We boy. don't. We don't make fun of names. No, no, we don't make fun of names. Dan Goon is getting poked out a little bit by Mickey, but Academy has the map control right now. They are able to pressure around this Baron pit and try to establish vision, at least on their side of the jungle. Ooh, a lot of people moving comes up to the, the top. Twisted advance. The panic room. Yeah, he sees this coming a mile away. I like the Zareth pickup um, to compete with the, the mobility of Lulu. Oh, fight starting. Zareth goes nuclear really quickly right there, and that's going to prompt Yancer to try and get into the fight. Stand behind me to disengage this one, but will they be able to get out in time? Barrel's going to land explosive cast, not doing as much as planned. Khan tanking the front line a lot, and this is looking bad for Young Glory while growth being spent just to keep the Lulu alive. However, Yanfu sacrifices in order to stay alive, or the rest of the team to stay alive, but number one wasn't listening to those orders. Two for free. A protect the Kogma composition. Oh, oh so it's not over yet. So is he staying alive somehow through all of this one. Finally going down Glitter Lance around the side. However, that's going to open up a lot of options. That's MLZ. He gets evaporated by, I don't even know just yet. That was Kogma coming up with the kill. Nicely played. Shen Long, but still, they lose themselves a lot for all of that. So th this does gimp their barren fight ability. So they won't take anything off of this one, but... I would say Academy when, won that fight, just oh, barely. Very heavy-handed. Um, win conditions of Young Glory's team composition. If you have a Protect the Kogma composition, you cannot and you should not be fighting without Kogma. The biggest issue of that last team fight was that Jin Long was on the complete opposite side of where he needed to be. Um, he effectively, I think he got two ultimates off, trying to pick up Jarvan on that, that side little corner before he even engaged into that fight. So too a little too late of Kogma getting involved there. Yeah, and it, it's, it's unfortunate <laughs> Face for Academy. Tanks the tower. Yeah. Guys, we can do this. doesn't even matter. Uh, it's unfortunate for Academy that they've been winning these fights and unable to take much more than a dragon. However, the game is still pretty even. So there's always a chance for this thing to start turning around here. Two towers in favor of Young Glory. But the fact that Academy's been so close in gold means that they have been able to maybe take the fights a little bit better. And, and you've got a 4-2 Tristana. SMLZ, well, you know when he gets rolling, it gets rolling. And 4-2 is not a terrible score. At least this time, Jen long has got a kill to deal with. But it's the spread of the gold. Most of the gold for Young Glory is on Lulu. And we say this all the time, but I'll say it again. Lulu is a mid-bridge champion. She has strength and power early in her early bull, uh, lane bully phase. And she transfers that power and that strength over onto her 80 carry come late game. She bridges her early strength to the late game with wild growth, with whimsy, with her shield, things like that. The issue is, is that uh, Shin Long is not who you want to put your power on, frankly. I feel like Dian Goon has come up much bigger for his team, and Shin Long really has yet to kind of find his footing as far as the split is concerned. So uh, yeah. a bit of a gamble there. It was such a strange choice, too, because the answer, or excuse me, Dian Goon, answer to, I suppose, to a, to a much lesser extent, likes playmaking champions. Uh, Yenser has been able to do that, but Dan Goon, yeah, even though he's 4-1, he's on Lulu. He, this is not a champion that can hard carry a game. He doesn't have a big enough backpack. <laughs> we'll see how big his backpack really is. Again, 4-1-4. Decent score. He's doing okay, Ishido, I suppose. So that, uh, he is not a champion that can take out a 4-2 to Tristana. We talk about how if your AD carry gets out of hand, you just need 
you, you need tools to answer that, typically in the form of the assassin, and they don't have that. No, uh, they really don't have any answers long term, and this is why Academy definitely has a better scaling later on their side. Young Glory is still keeping it even, and they're pushing towards the map here, but you got to wonder when is this going to start turn, turning around? When does Academy get confident enough to start taking those five-man engages on their side? This is where the Brahm insurance policy comes in, and they just have to avoid the Glacial Fissure, but they, Young Glory, even more so. Has to avoid letting Shen Long get a little bit too far forward on this cog. He has come up big this time. Ooh, Yanser, he's the one gets too far forward and gets knocked and blocked. There is going to be the Cataclysm. Yanser is on the outside of it. Can they turn the fight here? I don't know. They're still going for it, but they back away. That was a, that was pretty a special... intense graphical. Yeah, every time the fight <laughs> starts, it's so hardcore that the graphics just break. <laughs> they literally break the game. We do see a flank coming from Khan. Well, this is what happens when Lucian is disabled, Frosk. <laughs> what He's have you brought upon us? for the rest of the... Yeah, he might be. Whoa, series. hello! There's a lot of stuns being gone in there. However, Big Spider comes up around the side. Yancer, he's taking out a lot of the damage to the face, but they're trying to keep in this one. Khan, not wanting to give them an inch right now. Yancer's very low, but he's stunned up. And they're looking for a fight even around the side. World Elite Academy just wants to take themselves a kill, but Yuge is going to be the one that goes down first. Yancer on the forward front. Mickey, he's going low. So it falls down. That's another two kills over, and they have to bail out of this one. Another kill for Dan Goon, making the plays. They answer it with Yancer. However, this is going to be an ace. They can turn for Baron, or can they? This is really too low, actually, with that last <laughs> pickup. I was about to say it. And they can make this died. a mid-tier tower. Um, we talked about Dian Goon's backpack came up big right there. The the biggest thing though was that Young Glory had a much better. I'm sure we'll see the replay of it. They grouped together and they cover their flanks and they collapse together and they utilize the strength of the Kogma that time. Whereas World Elite Academy entirely spread out. They didn't have the Zareth ultimate to work for, so obviously a huge cooldown as far as their damage is concerned. Um, off we'll the it. table right there. Here we, there go. we go. So Flash Cocoon doesn't connect, but. He kind of just ends up being a tank because the wild growth comes out. He repels away just to stay alive. Then Yancer comes in. He's still tanking all this damage. But everyone from Academy is way too far in the back to really do anything right here. So Khan goes forward. Yuje goes forward. They just keep changing targets. Oh, hey, look, we can get Dian Goon. There's the headbutt pulverize. However, it's Yuje who gets knocked down. Then Soist and Mickey, not sure if they want to take this fight. SMLZ almost did nothing for the duration of that chase and then had to bail out as soon as they realized that they were losing too many members. However, Dangu got locked up under tower, so they managed to answer with that. Very nice cask from number one. Mm -hmm. It only takes one. Oh, they're still going. Team Deathmatch engaged. So it says, fight me in the cage as Yuje and Mickey's around the side. Hey, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Except a Lulu-shaped fish. That got really dark. Yeah. I was trying to come up with something clever, and that was what it was. <laughs> I tried. Every, like, every Everyone gets one, right? <laughs> There's one, Pyra. Okay. If I do it again, GG. Oh, it's going to be a tower. Good response from Willie Academy. They make a clean pick on Dian Goon, immediately translate it into a tower. Yeah. Um, and that, they, they just have this incredible confidence that they're going to be able to make the pick when they go for it. And that's what allows them, I think, to, to go headlong into this. Young Glory was a little bit hesitant. Even in those fights, you could see that it was kind of a lot of back and forth until they realized they had the numbers advantage, and then went all out. World Elite never faltering in that. And you could say, yeah, it's too ham, it's too aggressive, but it works out for them more often than not in these games. The, these last couple specifically. It's, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the pressure is on Khan to perform better than he did that last team fight. Um, he didn't really use his ultimate effectively for his team. I think he, he flash W'd onto three members of uh, Young Glory, but there was no follow-up as, you know, they were chasing Gragas across the map. So, see if they can get on the same page. We talked about the communication is issues that World Elite Academy might face, you know, having two Korean members brought over, kind of in a Hail Mary shake-up of their roster in the very back half of the split. Yeah, they've had a lot of ups and downs this split. Mostly downs, though, with the roster. Oh, hey, here we go. So is trying to take the fight to Young Glory, and that is going to be... Yin Fu saying, I'm out of here, but Izzy, he's running the wrong way right now. Might lead him on a wild spider chase. Oh, Zaris going nuclear. Can he get the fourth hit? No, he doesn't. That's not enough. Oh, but I don't think this is going to end well for Yin Fu. He's stalling. Stays a little bit of time. So that gets his team in position to try and contest a Baron if it happens. So Academy not going to go for that one. Wise move. 
It, it was smart to stall right there, obviously, not to get caught. Believe he, nope, didn't have flash fail. So he just sidestepped that Zareth stun. Fancy footwork, blue suede shoes. He needs eight of them. <laughs> Those are expensive boots. Yeah, I don't think he has enough item slots. He has to like sell his trinket and then he gets a seventh one and there's still one leg that doesn't have a boot on it. I remember when I first started playing this game, I was so perturbed that I only had to buy one pair of boots, even though I had two legs. I, uh, I used to play Cassiopeia. And I always wondered how she wore boots. And then somebody directed me to the best picture of all time, which is like where it's like sitting on her head and she's just kind of like <laughs> doing the cat smile, like the anime cat where it's like just a little three for your mouth. <laughs> and then I realized that this is the league community. This is it. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty great thing. Can't complain. Speaking of league community, the largest League of Legends community is for China. Um, you know, obviously they have the, the biggest population in the world, but just sheer volume numbers, um, more people watch LPL technically, which is so bizarre because, you know, we come from the Western world where Everything's literally TV, no right? one, yeah, no one knows anything about LPL. They're like, oh, Uzi, I, oh, they say Uzi, well, I would, Uzi, I would that guy, that right? would hope dispensing your knowledge is, is certainly helping some people, Frost. Uh, Ta Tabe's still on the team, right, guys? Oh... When someone says that, it hurts a little bit. And then I died inside. You know what else hurts a little bit? So is the going answer. in on the answer right now. <laughs> yeah, they're going to go all for this one, and Brahm's health bar is still pretty heavy right now as they get the fight started off. Gets around the side and pops the winner's bite. Not going to be nearly enough. That is going to be Zhenlong going way too far forward, and he gets oh, bursted down. SMLZ, can he stay alive? Oh, he can't! He goes down, but he trades for Dian Goon right now, and it's so crazy that the stream itself... Couldn't keep up with this one. Oh my goodness. The chase is back on as SMLZ comes up with yet another kill. However, it's a two for two. Academy on the chase. And see if they can find number one. Nope. That'll be the disengage. Two for two trade, but again. Was that for Sealy? That uh, rocket jump into certain death immediately gets blown up by Dian Goon. That, that is the insanity. eight, four, and seven Lulu, sir. That was pretty crazy. So I'm going to have to ask you to calm down. Uh, you know what? I thought you were the one who has to calm down. Please? My, <laughs> my, my energy level stays at a pretty consistent 5 or 6. It's like, it's like humming along. Did he miss that brush? Yeah. Oh, oh there's a pink ward. Oh, I can do something about that. Um, but yeah, uh, I can't even... Nope, yeah. No, that's the infamous Scar Ward. Uh, that's a, he was standing in the brush. He mooshooed that. He, I'm not sure how that was possible. He was three feet in front of you, and you just missed it. Oh, God. I didn't, like, for a second, I completely missed the Milan reference, and now I'm ashamed of myself forever. We're in China, sir. Yes, this is true. Oh, you know what else is true? It's Baron. It's 28 minutes. It's Baron time. I smell yeah, so this happening. No way. No way. Okay, gave everyone's away, scattered. <laughs> It's like LMQ when Curse walked up to them doing Baron. Oh, that they was hilarious. Immediately they just, like, they just jumped ship, everything. like two, two flashes. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of wards being spent. Okay, so the ward wars. This is what it's come down to. And now it's going to be Dragon Time, but Young Glory, guys, guys, there's a Baron happening right now. Uh-oh. And it's on top of a pink ward, so Ward Lead Academy, with the confidence that they see that it's happening, we're going to force them to fight us. Xerath is in the area barely for his ultimate. Yeah, they stay around for the finish of the dragon, or at least... Oh, this is a 50-50 Baron. Whoa, there's going to be the barrel coming in to start the fight off. They're taking low. Baron is going to be the best friend in this one. Yancer coming in. Can he get in for the smite steal, though? It's taken low right now. Oh, it falls down, and he misses the smite, but they pick it up anyways. That's going to be the start of this one for World Elite Academy, instantly melting through the health bar of Zhen Long yet again. Yancer has to run away from this fight. He's going to come back in or try, but Dian Goon is zoned away. They've got nothing number one can do that's going to be another pickup they answer back with mickey however it's going to be a three for one and everybody else from young glory on the run right now ay 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 and again young glory completely fumble the baron yen fu not even available for the smite contention he was busy farming the mid lane and then he started to go and dive the back lane on top of mickey god mickey god went down but it's a three for one trade and they're pushing up towards the inhibitor Big decisive moment for Academy right now. They might be on the cusp of a 2 and 0 oh, as they look to push themselves forward here. 30 and a half minutes in, first inhibitor going to fall down in favor of World Elite Academy. But not if Young Glory, Dian Goon, and friends have anything to say about it. Looks like they don't. The answer might want to get a parting shot. Does tag SMLZ a little 
little butt tap to see him off. You know, he's 8-4. Uh, it's not as huge Look at where as last Yen Fu game, is on this map right now as we see the blue Okay, fight. Let's, let's look at this. So the Baron's going down. And look at that spider. the crazy fight's happening. Yeah, the spider's trying to skitter uh, into lane as fast as possible. And then it's, ooh, hey, there's some farm over here. Oh, what's that? We need to fight? Oh, uh, I guess I missed it. Yeah, that, that was the big problem here, right? Now, speaking of fighting, we're back to it. Oh, this is going to be a little bit of trouble, though, as SMLZ manages to get in and out just in time. There's a Cataclysm coming in, jumping forward. Sois is going to go down. However, they managed to get themselves two kills and then some three now with the pickup of Yin Fu and only trade Soas Baron buff for it. SMLZ and UJ, they're low, but they're still confident they can push on forward. No objective they're marching to take mid, they yet. have the Baron regen. They might try to end this. This is going to be crazy right now, Frostgren. It's going to be a pretty crazy fight, at least. It's going to be a 4v2 if they can stop it. Certainly, they have to try here, but those towers are melting through pretty fast. I think this game might be locked up and done. World Lead Academy comes up huge with a 2-0 over, over Young Glory, up, <laughs> upsetting the world dreams. Yep, that is uh, in huge fashion. World Lead Academy comes up the victors, and they look like they might be on the lower end of things. I mean, la dead last team, four points. They have not come up with a single 2-0 against anybody until to now, until to now, to now, tonight, today, whatever it is. They to managed, now. Yeah, the world has just been turned upside down. To and now you on can LPL. Tell, you can tell that they are very, very happy with that result that they've just achieved. Young Glory stunned into silence here. Uh, frankly, this goes back to pick and ban. Like, if we're going to say, where did, where was this game decided? It was in the first three minutes of before the game even started. Uh, we talked about it last time. World Elite Academy got every single pick that they wanted. They had a fantastic showing on Jarvan. They had an amazing showing. SMLC coming up huge on that Tristana. Yushe got another hard engage support champion. You know, Luna this time traded over for Alistair. Uh, they didn't get the cast in a pickup, however, he got picking up the Xerath to follow Dian. Like, Dian Goon is the playmaker for Young Glory. He a very mobile mid-champion. He didn't follow up the mobility with, um, you know, like an Oriana like Dissonance or anything like that. He followed up the mobility with his semi-global ultimate range, which is, was incredibly smart as well. So, I, I don't know what... I, I like to praise Young Glory on their pick fan phase. I think that it's creative and sometimes incredibly unique and powerful considering LPL, but that was a complete blunder. Yeah, stretching pretty out there tonight as they go 0-2 gets their opponents World Elite Academy. But of course, that is only the warm-up match because when we come back, it will be a long break. Apologies for that, guys. It's going to be about an hour after all of this. But when we do come back, and you'll want to stick around for it, it's going to be Edward Gaming, second place Edward Gaming, taking on the Red Hot super hot starhorn world club crew whatever they are they're doing really well so guys you won't want to miss that we will be back and we'll be playing some games in between you should see some rebroadcasts of sorts uh or maybe we'll just run the commercials depends we'll be back in a little bit so guys stick around hang tight you're of course watching the lpl in english and we will be back